This video is sponsored by Arcane Wilds, an amazing strategy game I'll tell you more about later on. 2024 is a wild year for strategy games, and if you don't believe me, then check this out. Manor Lords, a historically authentic strategy game aimed around offering a deep city builder experience with the added bonus of intense real-time tactical battles. Kaiserpunk, a grand strategy, battle and city builder combo based in an alternate 20th century world. Millennia, a 4x civilization-like strategy game from Paradox itself, aimed at bringing a deeper and more immersive approach to the genre. Pax Augusta, an economy and city management game taking place in Roman times, where you must do your best to increase trade and your standing in Rome's political system. Field of Glory Kingdoms, a deep and expansive medieval strategy game from Slytherin that seeks to create the ultimate grand strategy game with the add-on of actual tactical battles. Ultimate General American Revolution, a new strategy game from Game Labs offering both a deep real-time campaign, awesome battles in the field, and even naval battles. Headquarters World War II, a beautiful looking tactical war game where you fight for every house and street in Europe as the US, UK, or Germany. Anvil Empires, an extremely exciting massive online continuous war game from the creators behind Foxhole. Sea Power, naval warfare in the missile age, a naval and air combat simulator taking place during the Cold War era which allows you to control NATO or Warsaw Pact forces. Task Force Admiral, a game allowing you to battle with aircraft carriers and their planes in the Pacific Theater during World War II, Gilded Destiny, an indie grand strategy game that approaches the Victorian era in a new and alternative way, Stellaris Nexus, a new take on Stellaris from Paradox, which technically is out this December, Falling Frontier, a deep and expansive space strategy game where you need to build your fleet and traverse a vast universe, Nova Roma, a wholesome and fresh take on the city building genre taking place in ancient Rome, Celestial Empire, what looks to be a city and trade development game in a somewhat mythical ancient China. Men of War 2, the latest title in the Men of War series, offering action-packed and historically accurate features and battles. Frostpunk 2, the long-anticipated sequel to Frostpunk, which takes place in a frozen post-apocalyptic world. Capital Command, a space strategy sandbox game giving you control of capital ships with more or less realistic space battles. Terminator Dark Fate Defiance, a real-time strategy game set in the Terminator universe between humanity and Legion. Homeworld 3, a real-time space battle strategy game in this legendary series finally set to release. Aura History Untold, a new civilization-like strategy game set to go even deeper with a unique and more personal look. Broken Arrow, a large-scale, modern, real-time tactics war game with awesome graphics and massive variety. Espiocracy, a fresh take on the grand strategy genre, focusing on espionage and intrigue during the Cold War. Tempest Rising, a modern take on the classic RTS game with distinct command and conquer vibes and beautiful graphics. And finally, I wanted to include Cubiquest Castlecraft, a unique looking tower defense game that just looks like a whole lot of fun. With so many titles, I hope I've got your attention. But what I didn't show you is a strategy game I've praised on this channel before, one that's already available to play and getting better by the day, Arcane Wilds. Arcane Wilds is a real-time strategy game set in a mythical depiction of a 19th century new world, where you get to take control of various armies you can tailor to your own liking. Being an RTS game, you have the classic formula of building your base and creating your settlement and army, but more than that, it's the game's dedication to cooperative multiplayer gameplay. You get to build up your base on your own home island from where you head out into missions, either in single player or online with friends. Now you must make sure to collect the power essence resource to give your units an edge in the field. But a big thing in Arcane Wilds is that resources can actually be stolen in real time from your enemies and by your enemies, meaning you must take care to guard your resources until you've collected and deposited them, and be on the lookout for raiding opportunities yourself. Wrapped in some absolutely charming visuals as well, and offering a host of different missions, I highly recommend you download Arcane Wilds right now, which is currently in a free open playtest on Steam. And don't worry, the game has no microtransactions either, so you just get to play and enjoy a really fun game for free. So go check out Arcane Wilds Playtest now, and thank you so much to Avancadia for sponsoring this video. Our first game is Manor Lords, perhaps the most anticipated strategy game in the world at the moment, not least of all because of its ranking as the number 4th most wishlisted game on the entirety of Steam. And it's not for nothing. Manor Lords is a medieval, realistic, and very historically accurate looking city building game, but one that also combines it with real-time tactical battles. 
This should be intriguing to most strategy players out there, especially those who love history. But what's so unique about Mana Lords seems to be its approach. The game is offering a stylish and modern UI, yet visuals that look realistic and beautiful. Nothing is really out of place here, and there are no bombastic fairy tale castles or dragons. It's all fairly small scale and organic, meaning you need to work for your achievements. You must manage population growth and resource gains with the recruitment of levies and soldiers, and what's fascinating is that your armies are all or mostly made up of your citizenry, meaning losing people in a war will impact your economy and life at home. The battlefield is total warlike on a smaller scale and will demand tactical use of your units to seize victory. Mana Lords is set to release April 26th, 2024. Kaiser Punk is set in an alternate 20th century world, and the words Kaiser and Punk kinda gives it away. Instead of steampunk, Kaiser Punk refers to a bit more technologically advanced form of era, and from what I gathered, Kaiser Punk will actually be relatively historically authentic in terms of technology, while certainly open up options throughout. This is a strategy game that is set to combine production and building management, with gathering of influence as you attempt to dominate the larger global map. Everything goes on in your city-state, and it's from there, the production and resource gathering on a close-up level, that you further your empire. In other words, Kaiserpunk combines grand strategy with an overworld map, with production chains, logistics, and even battles on the field, with new technology giving you an edge as you play. There's not a whole ton we've seen from the game yet, but this does sound promising, and I'm excited to see and hear more from Kaiserpunk before it releases sometime in 2024. Now on to Millennia, which I have to say was a surprise announcement from Paradox in my opinion. Millennia is a new type of game from that company to be sure, but not a new concept on its own. Millennia is a historical turn-based 4x strategy game in the style of Civilization and arguably Age of Wonder, which also follows the same style. Here, you'll be taking control of a human civilization on its way from dawn of humanity into various possible futures, racing cities, researching new innovations, and tailoring your people to your liking. Managing your economy and war machine will be vital for victory, and so will choosing your national spirits, essentially one of the ways Millennia allows you to tailor your faction and civilization. It will be interesting to see how different Millennia plays and feels when it likely arrives sometime in 2024. Pax Augusta is said to be a realistic ancient city builder, perhaps even the most realistic one as the game itself states. In fact, the game has made use of historians, archaeologists, and other experts to make sure buildings are recreated accurately and to scale. But authenticity isn't the only selling point here. Pax Augusta takes place in an era where Rome is ascendant, and is entirely focused on cultivating the land, improving the economy, and the lives of the people within. In Pax Augusta, you'll be given the proverbial patch of dirt, and must then do your best to build a new city, which then turn into several cities over a massive map from Britannia to Dacia. You'll also need to deal with managing defenses and the impact of distant wars, to one day hope to become an important senator, or perhaps even emperor yourself. There is much more to learn about Pax Augusta as we approach release, I'm sure, but for now, I'm really excited for this game, and can't wait to play it myself when it releases sometime in 2024. Field of Glory Kingdoms is the next game in the Field of Glory Grand Strategy series, and this time takes place in the medieval era. The reason why I'm so excited for this is because I'm always up for a new medieval grand strategy game, and this one seems particularly deep with various mechanics related to immerse you into the time period, like authority and disorder, dynasties and the meaningful transitions of power, religions, population mechanics, a deep warfare system where units matter, and very importantly, a cool integration with Field of Glory 2 Medieval, which means that what's on offer here is a combined turn-based grand campaign with deep turn-based tactical historically authentic battles, which we already know are awesome to play because the battle part of this game is already out. From what I've seen, I'm also a big fan of the graphics and visuals here, and I just can't wait to see what AGOD are cooking up for perhaps our next favorable medieval strategy game likely to release sometime in 2024. Ultimate General American Revolution is one of the most interesting and ambitious strategy games I've seen in a while, and that's on top of being an indie game developed by just a handful of people. This game unsurprisingly takes place during the American Revolutionary War, and combines a real-time strategy campaign that even opens up and expands over time with actual real-time battles on the field, where your armies meet in a similar style to Total War, while also managing to implement a naval battle system on top of everything else. I've already played this game and the video can be seen right here on the channel, and in fact, you can play this game right now if you wish to participate on the Early Access version on the Solo platform. But if you want to wait for the Steam release and many new and updated features, including a unique British campaign, then you better wait for the game's Steam release, which is likely to arrive sometime in the middle of 2024. 
Headquarters World War II is a deep and detailed turn-based strategy game set during World War II in Europe and allows you to take control of infantry and vehicles to dominate the battlefield. With varied maps, army management and experience systems, and importantly, a focus on tactics and highly realistic unit management. What just looks extra cool to me here are those beautiful visuals, which I feel is partially what's been lacking in certain games of this type. But Headquarters World War II looks like a focused but fun strategy game I'll be looking out for in 2024. And if you love World War II and want the variety of taking control of the various armies of the USA, UK or Germany, then look out for this game in 2024. Animal Empires is one of the most unique strategy games on this list, as it does something completely innovative just like its spiritual predecessor, Foxhole. This is a medieval, massively multiplayer game, featuring literally thousands of players in the same space to fight in epic sieges and field battles, keeping your army supplied, and to build and prepare for war together. Everything happens in the same space and seamless over time. In other words, this is a persistent online world in a literal sandbox space. You'll even be able to build towns, fortifications, and cities together over time. And I just have to say how beautiful and awesome this game looks. This is a true gem to look forward and pay attention to when it hopefully releases in 2024. Sea-powered naval warfare in the Missile Age is definitely looking interesting, especially if you're into combined naval and air wars. First of all, take a look at how awesome this game looks. They share visual fidelity not just of the carefully crafted ships, that look absolutely towering, but of the finely tailored aircrafts, and of the seas themselves of course, which give the entire game a realistic and full look. Sea power takes place during the Cold War, and you get to play and take control of various forces both in the NATO and Warsaw Pact alliances. The game will include a dynamic campaign, historical and fictional scenarios, several theaters around the world, real-time combat with advanced flight and ship physics and mechanics, and so much more, including dynamic time of day cycles, the ability to save wherever and whenever you are, and to adjust the speed of the game, meaning you can pause or likely slow down time. Sea power naval warfare in the Missile Age looks super promising, which is why I think you should add this game to your list for when it releases in 2024. Task Force Admiral similarly offers combined naval and air warfare from the same publisher actually, but from a different developer, and it does so in a different time period and with a different approach. This game takes place during World War II and the Pacific Theater, allowing you to duke it out between America and Japan and experience these intense dogfights and aircraft carriers battle on a grand scale. You can even do so using first person, God's eye, or a more dynamic perspective of the action, with a ton of customization options, a large number of vehicles carefully crafted, and so much more. And again, everything looking beautiful. Just like Sea Power, I'm really excited to see more of Task Force Admiral when it hopefully releases in 2024. Gilded Destiny is another indie take on the grand strategy genre, and one that looks very interesting. Instead of offering just a laid out map, Gilded Destiny provides us with a full globe to manage the world with, but even allows you to zoom down and check out the landscape and your cities developing. Gilded Destiny looks like a true passion project from real 19th century and strategy enthusiasts that seeks to combine that high upper tier level with warfare and army management, diplomacy, and many other aspects of this period, like government administration and the formation of new nations and governments. Gilded Destiny is currently in development, but I think it's allowed to at least hope and pray for a 2024 release at some point during the year. Stellaris Nexus, a game that releases in early access this December in fact, is a new take on Paradox of Stellaris. Nexus then is a simultaneous turn-based multiplayer 4x game that seeks to be a bit more fast-paced and even action-oriented. In fact, it sets out to be a lot more approachable and player-friendly, allowing you to play full Stellaris campaigns with government management and warfare and diplomacy that lasts around the span of one hour. I think this approach to Stellaris and strategy can be super fun actually and I do like the concept, so if you want to get into Stellaris but need a bit of jolt to do so, then Stellaris Nexus might just be the place to start alongside your friends either this December or in 2024. Falling Frontier is one of the coolest upcoming space strategy games I've ever seen. Taking place in a massive procedurally generated star system, Falling Frontier is gorgeous from those hyper-detailed spaceships and stations, both of which you must use to gather resources, customize your outposts and ships, set up trade networks, conduct diplomacy and to build your empire, to the beautiful planets and system maps themselves, revealing yet another indie game that despite being made by a very small team, oozes with passion, dedication and devotion to the craft and genre. Falling Frontier has been in development for a while, and while it might seem right now like release is scheduled for 2025, I wanted to include it here for your viewing pleasure, and because of the off chance that it's released sooner rather than later. Nova Roma might just look like the colorful and stylistic version of Pax Romana, but it's so much more than that. 
Here you must not just carefully build and plan your city, but you must think of your people and their needs by managing your resources and supply chains, enact laws to make a better society, make use of Roman architecture to alter the environment and send water where it needs to go, and funnily enough, appease the gods to make sure bad stuff doesn't happen, because making the gods angry, it turns out, is not good at all. We even have different seasons here, and awesome things going on on a local level like chariot and gladiatorial games. Nova Roma might look simple, but it appears to be so much more, and I'm really hyped to see where this game is going when it releases in 2024. Celestial Empire is a city and civilization builder set in a mythical ancient China. As always, the goal is to create the best city and civilization possible by managing populations, buildings, and resources to create a safe and secure society. But what's awesome with Celestial Empire is the beautiful visual style which I find to be showcasing this region extremely well, alongside the more mythological aspects, which I think look awesome too. It's also vital to properly deal with the harsh winters, events, and possible diseases that might inflict your people. In other words, the challenges are multifaceted here, and I'm excited to deal with the trading system and whatever else the game has to offer when it is set to release in 2024. Men of War 2 is the latest entry in the Men of War series, offering real-time tactical battles set during World War II. The game offers new units, locations, new campaigns, and new game modes, with every vehicle, infantry unit, battlefield, and system being as historically authentic and accurate as possible, while also allowing for an action-packed tactical experience, both online and in single-player. Men of War 2 will offer a story mode that features both a Western Allies and Soviet campaign in their fight against the Axis powers. But no matter where you're fighting, Men of War 2 offers combined infantry, vehicle, and Air Force combat, and now with full mod support. Men of War 2 is set to launch in 2024, and I'm excited to see how it's going to play when it does. Frostpunk 2 has been a long time coming, and even though we don't have a set release date yet, it's now been so many years that I believe 2024 will be the year. Frostpunk 2 is the sequel to the post-apocalyptic Frostpunk, which came out all the way back in 2018. Frostpunk 2 is essentially a city builder survival game set in a new ice age where the cold is dangerous, and where you must decide how to lead your people into the future of this broken world. As opposed to Kaiserpunk as mentioned earlier, Frostpunk is all about a kind of 19th century world but with some new technology and aesthetics that give it a feel of that punk. But the essence of Frostpunk is all about that cold, that brutality, and the difficult choices which have to be made to make sure your people survive the harsh conditions in this sad, sad world. Capital Command is something as unique as a game that tries to create realistic spatial combat in space. Duh. Here, you control capital ships and fight other spaceships, but it doesn't look like Star Wars or anything. It actually attempts to create realistic distances and weapon systems, meaning ships are not broadsiding each other close up like the sail ships of the 18th century, but actually take advantage of the space and vacuum of space to be able to shoot at each other over vast distances. Capital Command looks interesting, and it'll indeed be interesting to see how it actually feels to play in 2024. Terminator Dark Fate Defiance is a real-time strategy game set in the Terminator universe and the war between humans and Legion, and offers both a single-player campaign where you must lead mankind's survival and a multiplayer section letting you go up against other players. Fighting the machines will be brutal here, so it's vital to make use of tactics, placement of units, and proper use of abilities. If you are a fan of the Terminator universe or like a bit of dark sci-fi with some cool visuals and story, then Dark Fate Defiance might just be for you in 2024. Homeworld 3 is finally releasing in March 2024, bringing back those genre-defining real-time space battles, and you must navigate particle storms, asteroid fields, and other space phenomena in this full 3D space as they appear. Tactics are as important as ever in Homeworld 3, meaning it won't just be pretty to look at, but will offer unprecedented customization, tactical options, and scope, and all of it is wrapped in the continuation of Homeworld's story and award-winning soundtrack. But more than just campaign, you'll be able to play online co-op and PvP battles, and I'm especially excited for the new 3-player war game mode. Mods will also make an appearance, which means we might be seeing some Star Wars stuff coming along if people put their minds to it. In other words, Homeworld 3 is shaping up to be something quite unique, and I am hyped to enter space in this new package when Homeworld 3 releases in March 2024. Ara History Untold is one of the most fascinating civilization-like games I've ever seen, and it's because of the way it looks. Because Ara looks like a mix between the strategy of civilization, the fun of a city builder, and the tactics of a total war game, offering close-ups and detailed cities on a massive world map, true detail instead of just a top-down view of your civilization cities, and battles that look cinematic and beautiful. Honestly, Ara History Untold almost looks too good to be true, and I think this mix of strategy, tactics, and city building has the potential to be something of a perfect game if done right. 
published by Xbox Game Studios, I really hope developer Oxide Games is given the time and funding to create a proper blockbuster that lives up to the hype. And I'm excited to see the final product sometime in 2024. Broken Arrow is a modern, large-scale real-time strategy game that focuses on tactics and awesome action. Offering a new army building system and deep unit customization options, the game will provide over 200 realistic military units and technologies, with everything happening in beautifully realistic environments, and as you can tell, with equally gorgeous model vehicles and effects. Broken Arrow is the type of war game that's made for the military enthusiast, and you can jump in when it releases in 2024. SBocracy is something I'm particularly interested in because it seeks to do something quite special, namely to create a grand strategy game that mostly focuses on espionage and intrigue during the Cold War time period. Here you must use intelligence services and agents to create propaganda, wage and begin proxy wars, order assassinations, and even coups, all in the pursuit of establishing a new world order based on your ideology and political system. Featuring a beautiful campaign map and what appears to be a pleasant UI, I'm really excited to dive into Espiocracy in 2024 and to experience a grand strategy game that focuses on the actions behind the curtain and to see how the game goes about doing so. Tempest Rising is a game I find extremely alluring because it sets out to provide a classic RTS experience but with a fresh modern look and approach. The game looks beautiful, colorful yet dark at the same time, and I really like how detailed both units, vehicles, and bases are modeled. Offering a campaign that showcases a struggle for power between the remaining powers of Earth after a nuclear war, Tempest Rising is part realism, part sci-fi, and the approach to RTS and the story looks fairly distinctly inspired by the old Command and Conquer games, which I personally really love. Multiplayer will of course also be a big part of Tempest Rising, and I'm really excited to see how it all plays when it hopefully releases in 2024, but you can go check out the demo already now. And finally, quite the unique approach to strategy gaming right now is Cubiquest Castlecraft, a super wholesome, charming, and fun-looking survival strategy game that's all about that tower defense. This world just looks so beautiful and detailed, kind of like a mix between Minecraft and LEGO and even Mountain Blade honestly, and the fact that you can choose to take a more strategic battle plan approach or join in the fighting yourself while preparing these awesome defenses is what really intrigues me here. I really love the look of Castlecraft and definitely can't wait to play it at some point in 2024. And that was an exhaustive list of the 25 biggest and most anticipated strategy games of 2024, and I hope you enjoyed seeing the games. Let me know your thoughts on the titles and if there's anything I've forgotten, and make sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Cheers!